So recently I was watching one of the YouTubers I like, Tom Scott, and I saw he announced that he was stepping back and then he had a quitting video about how he was leaving one of his formats behind. Yeah, that touched close to home because I've been watching him for 10 years, which is also about the exact same time that we've been on YouTube. Yeah, and then Marquise Brownlee came out with a video about why he thinks YouTubers quit. It was really great. A ton of you have probably watched it, but I wanted to add some points I didn't think he touched on, including like the money, some other reasons people might want to leave and our experiences with YouTube that I can kind of understand why people are ready to tap out. Let's talk money and why people want to quit YouTube. Yeah, but first let's talk about our sponsor Squarespace who you can really rely on because like we'll probably be an apocalypse and only cockroaches and Squarespace will be left. <laughs> They're there everywhere and it's for a good reason. It's easy to set one up. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off if you want to buy it but or you can just use like the 14 day free trial and see how great it is. See what all the hype is about. Let's get into this talk because I've seen so many videos about people quitting and they mention some really great reasons like more time with family or they want to do more projects. But I, Wait, can I jump in? Because I came from the corporate world yeah. and the, every time some CEO or vice president would leave and say, I'm going to go spend more time with family, either they had a better offer somewhere else or they'd been involved in some scandal that hadn't yet leaked and they needed to quietly walk away. But they always put it on their family. So this is like raising red flags for you? Yeah, nobody ever said, oh, we are in trouble and I am bailing from the sink and ship. They're like, I'm going to spend more time with my well, family. Well, there's no way. You know Tom Scott. He genuinely is spending more time with his family. You, you're right. I believe Tom Scott. I, I just don't believe it from anybody else because I've heard it so many times. I, I do believe it from these people because I understand what it's like to be on YouTube. But they never mention money. And I totally understand why. Money is one of those private things where it's like a taboo conversation. No matter what you say about money, people are going to push back or get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think people would feel really odd saying, I'm either not making enough money or I'm making so much money that it's not worth making videos anymore. <laughs> I'm rich, bitch. Get out of here. I'm done. No, I don't think it's just that. I think it's like this money versus time equation. And I can relate to that. When we first started, we were, we didn't have extra money, but we had a ton of time and energy. And so when you first start on YouTube, you have that initial burst of energy from like just being high on starting. Mm. You have a ton of time. And if you're starting young, you probably don't have a partner or kids or anything like that. So you have way less responsibility. And, um, you know, then if you're lucky enough to have a really big success of a channel, the tables turn and you have a bunch of money and no time. Yeah. I, I think that that's something they could bring up and, and not feel ashamed. I'm not saying this is true for them, but it would be true for me. Well, suddenly you have the option to spend time with your family, right? And like a lot yeah. of people want to spend more time with their family, but they have to go to work to pay the bills. Well, that's what I kind of think is funny about the announcement. Like, I want to spend time with more time with my family. Everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Like, what if someone that worked at like Walmart was like, I'd love to be a cashier, but I've got to spend more time with my family. <laughs> like, there's like this question where like, yeah, of course, we all want to spend more time with our family. Well, most of us, unless your family's... I've known okay. people who worked real long hours and didn't need to. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> not all of us want to spend more time with our family, but not all of us have the option to and so I think that's like a little um, you know how they can know there's like a planet by just doing equations and there's like something missing or some other force <laughs> yeah. like there's money there that's allowing them to spend time with their family so if you are at a level of Tom Scott I kind of speculated about his finances in a short but I don't want to do that well, yeah but these big youtubers will make um, they can make a million bucks just from YouTube ads, yeah. if they're getting that level of views. Yes. And then the sponsorships eclipse that by a factor of five or ten. Yeah. So you can do that for a few years and just be kind of reasonable at managing your money and invest it and be set for life. And suddenly you, can, you, ha you, you have the ability to spend more time with your family. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, uh, do I want to spend more time with my family or, you know, take money I don't need anymore. So if let's say they'd amassed, I use this example on my short, let's say they got a chunk of $20 million saved, they'd be making passively one and a half to $2 million in interest. If you were making that, would you 
miss your kid's birthday party or something? Like, heck no. <laughs> Would I, you put up with the mean commenters on YouTube? I know, someone telling you you got fat or something, you'd be like, I am out of here. <laughs> but then conversely, I think there are also people who they're leaving because they have no money. Yeah. And that's another issue. And I have seen firsthand that there can be people who are great at making videos, great at what they're doing in their videos, but they're not good business managers and they're not good with money. So they might have a million subscribers and make as much as just not minimum wage, but like an average job, average income. Well, we did the math and on our channel, just based on what YouTube paid us, if we didn't have sponsors, we were making a little bit less than minimum wage between the two of us, once you subtracted expenses and everything else. So it's totally realistic that that would be the case, even for a pretty successful YouTube channel. It's only the sponsors that keep us fed and housed. Well, I saw that someone pointed me in the direction of another really great creator who wasn't gonna make anything anymore, and they were getting, their, their channel was like as similar as ours in mm -hmm. views, but nothing was sponsored. And I know our sponsorships can make you guys so upset, but we couldn't do this without our sponsors. Yeah, I mean, we she have quit. the way, you have to like skip forward 30 seconds for us to eat and like, and no, it's I'm not, not a, asking too much. It's not a matter of eating, but it is a matter of like, I'm not gonna be working all the time and being emotionally abused for minimum wage. Like pay me more <laughs> for that. But also there are other components like, there's really predatory people in this industry yeah. that will contact you and to do a deal with you. Like people tried to take their rights to our books and little bylines and contracts. People will do scope creep and convince you to do a job and then like steal value from you. You get broadband TV. I, I have gotten 150 something messages from broadband TV being like, join our uh, creator network or whatever. And you basically sign over the rights to your video. Allegedly. Well, okay, based on what somebody who actually signed that contract. Tony, I doing, believe you. I don't try not to get sued. <laughs> We're going to lose our whole channel for that. But then also negotiating contracts and stuff is really difficult. So I think people can be successful at YouTube, but then not be successful at monetizing it enough to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, th the next one is that it, it can be a bit of a roller coaster on YouTube. And I think both of us, we like creating something new. We are at our heart creators, not just video creators, right? And YouTube is extremely exciting when you're getting started, especially for us. Like we were there kind of at the beginning of YouTube and just to be able to create a video and have other people see it was mind blowing at the time. Yeah. But then you start seeing the views come in and the likes come in and you're getting 10, 20,000 views, you're like 20,000 people. I remember we'd go to a concert and it would be like seat 10,000 people and it would be like 10 times more people than this saw our video. And it yeah. is a real rush. It's a rush. They're sending you a silver play button then a gold play button. You're meeting your idols. You're going to events. We went to the Google headquarters. They sent a car to our house to drive us to New York. Like you're being treated like when you're growing like that, you're being treated in a way you've never been treated. I was a vet tech before this. I was literally in charge of plucking the hair from cat's balls. I'm not even <laughs> kidding you. So to have Google drive me out, I was like, what? It's a big upgrade. Puff, Puff Daddy's son was sitting next to me. Like, yeah. you are in this unreal, surreal environment that you're swept into. And then, you know, it's not new anymore. Then, you know, honestly, the third time you're sitting next to someone that's a big deal, you're just like, oh, hey. Uh, and then the next time you're like, you're not sending a car for me? Like, it's very easy to acclimate to this crazy stuff where you're like, yeah, of course 10,000 people watched my video. Why wasn't it 15? And mm -hmm. you all might think I'm being so spoiled, but we all do this. We all do this in every way where you acclimate. And so after a while, all the newness is gone and you're maintaining. And I think starters, are very different people than maintainers. And this is something I learned in my business education as well. So like often founders are not the people that end up being the CEOs or the managers of huge companies. And it's because it takes two different personalities to do those things. I will also mention that the vibe totally changes when you get successful. Because in the beginning, people were like, yay, Tony and Chelsea, I feel like you're my friends, more success to you. And then you hit a million subscribers and people are like, dumb, overrated. <laughs> A ugly face why is your hair like that and you, you're like what happened I'm the same well aren't you guys supposed to be nice to me 
Yeah, you start to attract a broader audience. And yeah. I mean, I saw an article about Mr. Beast recently, who yeah. seems like the nicest person. And we've seen like behind the scenes videos where we interact directly with him. He is the nicest person. But people hate Mr. Beast. And whoever you like, there's a bunch of people out there who hate him. And there's no other explanation than they got big enough that they drew a bunch of haters too. And you do feel that because those haters have loud voices. Yeah. Do you remember the time I accidentally took a video call with Mr. Beast in my pajamas? <laughs> You're like, oh, you want my camera on? Okay, I guess well, I have to do that. But I didn't think he was actually going to be there. I thought we were just video dialing into a bigger conference. Yeah. So that, I don't think he noticed. <laughs> okay, if you want a place where you can show off your work and people won't be mean to you, you can get your very own Squarespace. They have a 14-day free trial. You probably see Squarespace everywhere and you're like, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Well, then don't hear about it anymore. Just try it and see how great it is and see why they're sponsoring everyone. You can drag and drop. You can set up a store, a gallery, an about page. You can put all your contracts in one place. Be organized, professional, and look good. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That gets you an amazing website and lets Squarespace know I'm doing a great job so I don't have to quit YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Squarespace. Uh, let's talk about burnout because sometimes you might not even have enough money, but you simply emotionally cannot do it anymore. YouTube can be a grind. And I know people out there are going to be like, whoa, no, no, no. Other jobs are way more of a grind. I believe you, but you can get worn out doing anything. Well, Tom Scott said it's a dream job, but it's a job. Yeah, it really is. That's it's right. It's absolutely true. And when you get your success by being on like a non-stop high-speed treadmill. Mm -hmm. you, uh, Marquise Brownlee said in his video, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And that's absolutely true. You have to pace yourself, but how do you pace yourself when it just takes an excessive amount of work to gain any traction in an overcrowded space where every single person wants a piece of the pie? It's, it's a marathon, insane. not a sprint, except every single YouTuber starts out in a sprint. Yeah. And that's the reason that they get any traction at all is they're sprinting flat out. And then either you have to make the choice, I'm going to slow down, in which case your channel's going to slow down. Everybody sees this. Or you keep trying to sprint until you lose your wind. And that's what a burnout is. You can't sprint forever. I thought burnout was a cute little... Not cute, but just like a not that serious term for being stressed at work yeah. until I experienced burnout and it was awful. And I don't think our channel would have made it without you like carrying a lot of the weight. Yeah, as long as we don't burn out at the same time, maybe we can keep things going. By the way, how did it go in the comments when you told people that you were burnt out? They accused me of faking it for likes, but I was like... I know. It's like such a YouTube thing. You're like actually expressing real feelings and people just attack you for that too. It's like, this is why I'm burnt out, or at least part of it. Actually, one of our peers accused me of faking it. Like they were like, oh yeah, burnout. But like I couldn't get out of bed. I'm pretty sure it was depression too. Yeah. Like I was having a hard time like, oh, I got to wash my hair again. And I'm supposed to make a YouTube video and be vulnerable in front of everyone. Clickbait feelings, Chelsea. Yeah. So, but I did get out of it. I got to the other side of it. So if you're going through burnout, there is hope. You can get to the other side. Maybe see if you're depressed too. I wish someone had told me that in my burnout video. Like there's, there's help for you out there. You also have to find a pace you can maintain. I think that's the yeah. biggest mistake that people make is they believe they can just do it 80 hours a week indefinitely. Yeah, because I do think that you're riding that high and you just want to keep doing it, but it you can't keep up that pace. Um, I also think that during all that life happens, because we've also had like sick family members and stuff and you got to get in front of the camera. <laughs> like I literally had a family member die in front of me and then I've got to be like, buy a camera. It's hard. Yeah. And if you're at YouTube long enough, you become a different person. You move into a different era of your life, right? Yeah. Like I started this, what, 37? We started doing SDP and the videos and I just had my 50th birthday. Like I'm in a different part of my entire life. So of course I'm going to be different. My priorities are going to be different. I'm going to be sick of stuff that I thought was super cool. Yeah, we're aging, maturing, and changing, and I think that's natural for everybody. So I think our priorities change, but I've also seen other YouTubers where they're like, getting married, having babies, like buying new houses, settling down. Like maybe they're helping their parents and they moved in. Life changes 
And so your career is probably going to change around that. I, um, I can't imagine being pregnant, having a baby, raising a baby, and doing YouTube, no. especially if you were trying to keep up with the pace you established before you were pregnant. Oh well, my God, then it's too much. Being pregnant is enough. Well, you're faced with a choice if you're a new parent, like, am I going to put this kid in daycare or something so I can make videos? Or is my priority the kid? Or am I not gonna have kids at all? I mean, it's, it's a challenge, but I think people forget that YouTubers are just people. It is a dream job, but it's a lot of work. I'm not saying it's the most work. I'm not saying it's like a ER doctor or something, but it's pretty stressful. Yeah. I think that the other component is that I think a lot of people wanna leave on a high note because everything is really public. Um, I think maybe athletes and celebrities maybe have a similar public presence or career, but like what other career can you just look up the statistics of how someone's doing and see that like their subscribers are down or something? It's a lot of pressure and people will point it out though. Like we've had videos where people are like, that bomb, this video sucks, this channel's going downhill. And you just become very aware of the fact that your entire career is a spectacle. Mm -hmm. So I think some people it's like a good TV show when they want to end it before they jump the shark, before the show is bad and they lose their legacy. I think some people are like, let's end this before, before I'm, I'm not on top anymore. I want this to be on my own terms. I want control over my ending. Yeah, I, I understand. It seems pretty self-centered to me. Like every industry has an up and a down. There hasn't been a uh, celebrity, a uh, performer, or a company and industry that didn't go up and then at some point go back down. And you have yeah. to be strong enough to go through that. You have to acknowledge sometimes maybe your biggest days are behind you, but you still have something of value that's more valuable than what other people have. And our channel did used to get uh, several times more views than it did now. Not Maybe not even us. Maybe it was just the changing industry. People used to buy more cameras. They're more interested in still photography generally, and that's kind of our specialty. It might not even be in our control, but it's still kind of a bummer. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. get up every day and be like, well, this isn't going to do as well as it did a couple of years ago, but I still have to do the same amount of work. Yeah, I think that can be tough, but I think you, if you like enjoy what you're doing, then you keep doing it. Like to be more personal, would you just stop doing this? Like what if someone did give you that lump sum? What I, else would you do? I have a hard time imagining it. Like if somebody was like, here's a billion dollars, you never have to work again. I would definitely still be excited for the next camera to come out. Right? And I'd be like, who am I going to talk to about this? Maybe I'll make a YouTube video. Yeah, I think I'd be like Casey Neistat who went from vlogging every day to just, he seems like he just makes videos when he wants to. And yeah, he's a good cool. example. He never said, I'm retiring. He did say, I'm going to stop making a daily vlog. And then his videos came out much more. Sporadically, yeah. But he still always had that passion. Like he still clearly loves what he does because I don't think he has to do it anymore. But he loves it. But he sold Beam for a lot. <laughs> and that gave him a lot of options, including spending more time with his family. He does. I know. He's got a cool career. I yeah. do look at other YouTubers and their careers and be like, How, what are they doing? Like, this is kind of new. How do you retire as a YouTuber? Because my parents just worked till they were old and retired. But yeah, my dad just went until he was 67 or whatever the standard age was. He was about that age. But we are at the point now where successful YouTubers, including us, have been doing it for over 10 years. That's when Tom Scott was like, that's enough. And there ha this is the first time where there have been career YouTubers, yeah. right? I mean, 10 years isn't much of a career. But if you're successful, it, it can be a good career if you're a musician or an actor. Well, he's not totally successful. done. No, I, I know. He's doing his podcasts and stuff like that, but still to just wrap up a whole segment is pretty interesting. But broadly, we'll see YouTubers retiring. Like the people that you grew up watching will be off into the sunset. I feel like there's gonna be this divide because I am nervous for other YouTubers that they haven't had the financial education to know that they should be setting up like an IRA and investing in certain ways. And so, Sometimes I'm tempted to reach out, but then I don't want to be one of those financial advisor people. First of all, because I'm not a financial advisor yeah. and I don't know that much. I just know enough where I'm like, want to save people from getting. I've talked to people before who have been like 60 and asked me how to save for retirement. And I'm like, mm, that's kind of something you need time for, you know? So that makes me a little scared. Yeah, one of my first jobs, I was like 21 and I took a job at BBN big internet company and my boss was like a Harvard MBA and he sits me down and he's like 
okay, we have 401k. You're going to put the maximum amount in. We'll do some matching. You're going to invest all that in index funds and then you're just going to sit on it. And now that just that money is enough for me to retire when I eventually am able to withdraw that money, you know, when I'm 60 or 65. Thank or you to that boss. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. But you don't get that on YouTube. No. There's nobody saying set up an SEP IRA and invest the legal maximum so that the income is tax deferred. Nobody does that. Should we you. do that? for other YouTubers? I, I have had people ask me about it. I have had other YouTubers that we personally know be like, how do I retire? What do I, how do I, how do IRAs and all that work? So yeah. I do know there are big names that don't understand it. Well, I don't want to get into all that right now, but if you have any other questions about what it's like to be a YouTuber, drop it in the comments or if you have any other inputs. I mean, some people told me that they were, were disappointed they didn't do their YouTube channel in 2011. This, that's our dog, it's her sixth birthday, so I'm not gonna stop her. <laughs> Today's her birthday, she got a cheeseburger and she wants to scratch the rug. Who am I to stop this? When voice isolation exists. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, thanks Squarespace. You guys should like and subscribe and get a Squarespace. Squarespace is the home for your business, your project, your portfolio, your video reel, on the web. Use your social media to send people to your Squarespace website, your custom domain. Like I have northropphotography.com, you have chelseanorthrop.com, and those look way better than our social media ever could, and it's a good way to promote ourselves or whatever we're doing. Let's get started today at squarespace.com slash chelsea. Free trial, no credit card required. When you love it, coupon code chelsea gets you 10% off, C-H-E-L-S-E-A. And thanks for watching our podcast. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get more podcasts like these.